Hi, tea timers. So today I am drinking my Jasmine blend. And as you know, I love the smell. It's all part of the ritual. You got to smell it first. <sighs> I, there's nothing like the first cup of tea of the day. Mm. It's really, it's really comforting. Mm. Okay, now, um, let's see, I'm going to do a little bit of um, housekeeping right off the top because today is the final draw day for the Murchies Makes Cozy Tea Time collection. Um, you can still order it at Murchies, but, um, and do, don't forget to do the Meg, M-E-G, and, um, but this is the final one for one of my tea timers. It was so wonderful of Murchies to do this generous giveaway for my tea timers. So thank you, Murchies, and here's our names. Lots, lots, and lots of them. The final draw. Rumble, 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 rumble. Okay, here's one. I got it. Let's see who's the lucky final winner. Okay, I gotta open it up. See, it's stuck together. Robert Richardson. Yay! Congratulations, Robert. I hope you enjoy your delicious Murchies tea, and I will have them send it on. So hooray to Robert. All right. So let's see one other thing. Oh, oh, right. That's right. Um, Jameson, I wrote down what we're going to do. So, um, Jameson keep, was asking about the Psycho 2 watch party. So I thought first I thought, well, I could just do it. It could be my tea time. But then I thought, no, that wouldn't be fair to my tea timers because, um, Psycho 2 is not cozy. <laughs> I mean, it's cozy for my tea timers who like watching horror films, but for the rest of you, no. So I'm going to do it separate. So I think, what did I do? I wrote down here. Okay, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the live watch party at 9, uh, no, oh yeah, September 9th. So this September 9th on Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So that'll be 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's gonna be live YouTube, whatever, I don't know. I've never done it before. So you're gonna have to bear with me. <laughs> I'll get my popcorn and I'll have the film. Now, um, some people had recommended I could do it where I just do little clips and then talk about it. But um, part of the reason some of my psycho fan tea timers wanted me to do it was because I've never seen the movie before. And so I thought, well, if I see it beforehand and then do clips and talk about it, they won't get to see me watch Psycho 2 for the first time. But I think it might be too long because I looked it up and it's a kind of long film. It's almost two hours. So I'll just watch some of it and um, we'll start up at the beginning. We'll get our popcorn and I'll get my penny candy and put my earphones on and I can't watch I can't watch it like show you what I'm seeing, but if we all start at the same time, then you'll know what I'm seeing. And please forgive me if I talk through, but Don said, Meg, you can't just watch and then, and then, you know, you're going to have to talk through. And I'm like, oh, but isn't it rude to talk through movies? <laughs> but he said, no, that's why people are going to be tuning in. So, um, I'll, I'll, I'll just talk through if I have a memory or something like that. I don't know. Cause I've never done it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to join me, it's going to be September 9th at 6 p.m. East um, Pacific Standard Time, which is uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time live stream on YouTube. <clears throat> I hope I don't have the problem. You know how I was doing a, a Facebook live with Susan Elizabeth Phillips and um, we never went live. <laughs> I hope that doesn't happen to me. Oh, but Don's pretty good at technical stuff, although he's never done this before either. So this is going to be new for both of us. But what we think we're going to do is I'll sit with earphones. These are earphones in case you guys don't know. Obviously, I don't have the little earbud things. My husband can, but I think my ears, they're just too small because they just won't stay on my ears. So I use the big old ones like this. I'll, I'll, I'll look like, um, like I've got um, Princess Leia ears with the the things on, except for I'll have cords coming down. So I'll do that, and then he'll people. You can ask questions. Apparently, you can type in questions. So he'll feed me questions while I watch the film, and I hope I don't get scared. I'm hoping I don't get scared because I did it. So hopefully, it won't be scary to me. 
because I don't watch scary movies, but because I did, but I don't remember what the film's even about. I know there's this guy in, in his old house and his mom and that he had, um, you know, had a motel and, and uh, killed people who went into this certain room where he had a peephole. Um, so, but, and I remember my character was the daughter of somebody. Anyway, we'll discuss it all on uh, September 9th, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if it's running long or if you guys want me to do more, like I'll just do part of it, I think. I mean, I think it'll be too long to do a whole movie. We'll see, we'll see, we'll play it by ear. Okay, so, um, oh, okay, so there, that, that's that, let me take a sip. So those are both of the, the um, housekeeping things. Okay, other questions? Oh, oh, there's one more thing. So I did a book club with Deborah Neff, her book club, it's called Deborah's Book Club. And she also started a Facebook page because there was a page that she used to go to and a lot of other people did. And then that Facebook page shut down and everybody's like, oh no, we want to talk about books still, you know, because they liked having conversations about books. So she started up with some of the other people, a new one, and it's called Girls Who Love Books. It's a Facebook group. So I'll put the links to the, the, book club I did with Deborah and also the link to her her new Facebook page that's taking over for an, from another Facebook page in below. I said I will, but you know, my husband will do that. Okay, let's see. I, th I think that's all the housekeeping. I don't know that there's anything else. That's, I think that's it. I, oh, guess what? My two weeks are up. So um, I'm gonna have to start writing a new book a romantic suspense and I thought two weeks to kind of chew over like different ideas that I'd be right raring ready to go I'd have my characters I'd have <laughs> I don't have anything I got nothing it's like a big blank I mean floating around or oh well what about this or oh well maybe that but I haven't got anything concrete to put my um Think my teeth into. It's probably why I'm feeling a little bit sleepy this morning and needing to chug tea to try to wake up my brain. I'm hoping just miraculously when I go into my writing room that, you know, chorus of angels are going to start singing and I'll be like, oh, oh, that's who I'm writing about. But I don't know. Hmm. My hair, I, it's a, it's another hair drying day during my tea time. But look what happens. I don't know if this happens to anybody else. My hair is perfectly fine. And then all of a sudden, one day, one bit of my hair just decides it's going to go the other way. <laughs> it's like, no, no, no. We go this way. Nope, the spraying out this way. This didn't happen until I hit a certain age. <laughs> and all of a sudden, my hair just decides to go any which way it wants to. So anyway, that's what you have to look forward to, kitties. <laughs> there we go. Let's see, what else do we have? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, uh, Teresa Jones. Reading Hidden Cove and loving it. You have a great writing style. Your books are like extended tea times with you, LOL. I love that. I love that Teresa said that. And that's what I wanted. I wanted my books to feel like, well, I mean, my books are, are me because it comes out of me. So it's my offering to you. And I'm really, really happy that you find, find them like extended cozy tea times. That just, that just made me smile so big. So thank you so much. That was very sweet of you. Okay. Um, okay. So a uh, Paul, a uh, 201 net. Do you have any idea at all when the next one, he's talking about my books. I just took a piece of his comment comes out, or do you have to wait until an agent hooks it up with a publisher and stuff to get any idea? So yes, when I write a new manuscript, I don't know when it's going to come out. I don't know if anybody's going to want it. The blessing is, um, in the old days when, you know, cause I've been writing for over 30 years in the old days when you'd write something and your agent would send it out and you would hope that it would find a home. But sometimes people say, Oh, it's so beautiful, but we don't have space for this type of book or this or that, that would be the end of it. And you'd have to put it away. But nowadays, if, if the book, the manuscript that I just sent in to my agent, if she doesn't um, like it, or if, 
if she can't find a home for it, it's no big deal for us, us off, off, off us now. <laughs> Sometimes I have a little bit of a lisp if, when I'm, when I need more tea. Um, <laughs> so for us authors now, if that happens, I can just uh, hire a freelance editor to make sure it's all clean, make sure there's no spelling, um, if there's any gaps in the story. I mean, I've gone through it a bunch of times and Don went through it and then I went through again. Um, but I always find it good to have maybe two more, like if I had a editor and then get somebody else to do and do a couple runs with them and then do a copy editor. Because what I wouldn't want to do is hand out something to you guys that I felt was subpar. So there's always options, but I prefer to do it with traditional publisher. Personally, you don't um, get as much of the initial price of the thing, but I am I just love having, they do such great covers and such good editors. And, and that's why I'm doing it is I want it to be the very best book it possibly can be. So I prefer to work with, um, to work with traditional publishing just for me because, um, Yes, I do, <laughs> but I'll do the other. So if they don't want to, I will do the other. And then, but I, I need to write, I wanna write uh, romantic suspense in between, finishing up the other two stories, but it's kind of hard because the other two stories are floating around in my head, like saying, but wait, 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 what about me? Because I already know like a big chunks of it. So I wanna just keep going, but I can't. I've gotta do something else in between just in case. So, so I've gotta do it. I don't know what I'm gonna write. Drink some more tea. Okay, so more questions. Here goes. Um, uh, Zania, 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 I think, I don't hope I pronounced that right. Do you pre pick the questions uh, slash statements you'll reply to before your next video? Also, could you share your experiences with any acting classes or singing lessons? So I don't pre-pick. What I do is I write down, like I write down a bunch of things that I think, oh, these things might be uh, something that somebody's interested in. And sometimes I'll, I'll go and I'll be like, oh, there's this question here. Like right here, I, I got behind in a lot of them. So here I've got a whole page of, of questions that I, didn't answer, so I might go back sometime and do those. So I don't know, and then I'll write down a bunch of questions, but I don't know which ones I'm gonna answer, and I actually forget about them <laughs> after I write them. And so when I open this up and I read, then then I out comes whatever. So I don't I don't really pre-pick, although I do get so many questions that I do when I get the comments, I sort through them and and write down the ones that might have a question that I think more of the tea timers might be curious about. Um, so that's that's how I do it. Now, in terms of acting um, or singing lessons, it would be very hard to just do it in one, like, because you learn so much, right? When you're in the acting class. So if you have a specific question like, oh, like, how did you, I don't know, how do you do a sensory class or something like that? Then I, I can explain that. Or how do you first approach a scene? Um, then that, or who's your favorite? Like, what did you learn? The You know, or something like that. But to do the whole thing, my mind just went blank. <laughs> Actually, maybe I'll come back to that question after I have a little bit of time to think about it. In terms of the singing lessons, I did, my sister and I were in the choir and my mom had, my grandmother had paid for us to take choir lessons when we moved to the big city. Um, it wasn't a big city, but it was big city to us. We went from like running around, you know, dodging cow patties and all these uh, out in the, um, in the country. So to us, it was big city. And that's when I started ballet. And we also did singing lessons. Before that, my mom had us do singing with her. She had an old upright piano that she had bought uh, from the school. One of the schools was getting rid of it because it was a really old fashioned one. And so she would bang away on that and she would have us do our scales, you know, maybe once a week where you do like, you know, well, it's gonna sound weird, but may ya, may ya, may. And then she go, doom, doom. May ya, may ya, may. Doom, 
doom. So that was one of them that she'd do. And she'd be like, mm, when you'd have the, mm, you'd try to get the sound right in here and, you know, have it come out. Of course, I didn't, I didn't do like the way she had us do it, but she would have us do that and sing songs. And, um, and then when, at Christmas time, it was so good because we would sing and she would teach us different parts and harmonies. And it was, it was, it was a really happy time that those were one of the beautiful gifts my mom gave us all is, is that, that singing. And when we get together, when the family gets together, we always sing, we'll sing if, if, if just me and my sisters or me and my sisters and my brothers, or um, when we buried my mom, we, we all sang. We, when we um, put her ashes and we all spoke and then we all sang and um, we sang and sang and sang for a long time. Lots of her favorite songs, Scattered Rose Petals. So music, music was one of the wonderful gifts that she gave us. And, and for that, I'm very grateful. Oh my goodness, it's late again. <laughs> I, I just wrap it on. Okay, well, lots of love to all of you and um, and we'll see you, we'll either, well, I'll see you next week and then I think it might be the following whatever, the Thursday, I'll be doing the, the Psycho 2 thing. Alrighty, bye-bye.